get notifications, and stay updated every time I post a challenge podcast by hitting the subscribe button. Thank you all, and hope you enjoy. What's going on, everybody? So I have a very special guest joining me today, taking a little bit of a different turn on this podcast, but joining me today, I have, you may know him best as Walter Nichols from Drake and Josh, but joining me today is Mr. Jonathan Goldstein. Thanks for joining me today, Jonathan. Hey, thanks. And my guest star, of course, is Martha the dog. Say hi, Martha. There we go. Got a (laughs) two-in-one guest here, so... So she'll be uh, bopping in and out and being annoying as usual. That's fine by me. But uh, oh. how have you been? Oh, oh there we go. Uh, oh, I've, I've disappeared. Wait, there we go. <laughs> Drake and Josh mug. But uh, how have you been? How has, uh, you know, quarantine life with COVID-19 been for you? How have you kind of had to uh, adjust to that? Well, you know, it's uh, if you're not slightly depressed, there's something wrong with you. Right. (laughs) So there's sort of like it's this sort of, you know, it's it's weird. It's, you know, for all 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 of that craziness, um, considering I'm doing okay. I've been keeping busy. I teach a lot. So that that's all turned into going on Zoom. Oh, oh, we're on Skype. Oh, no. Uh, But doing like Zoom, Zoom teaching stuff. And I actually, that got to be a bit much. So uh, I've actually, I've taken a couple of weeks off, but, uh, you know, teaching um, and uh, it, stuff like this has been really helpful too. Like people have been reaching out for me to do podcasts and things. You know, when, when people get that bored, it's like, hmm, who made me feel good when I was a kid? And I guess I'm in that category, which is really nice and uh, have been, there's been a little bit of work in show business. Most people who are watching this probably know me just from Drake and Josh, but I'm a, I'm a journeyman actor. I've been, I, I'm on, you know, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm on TV all the time, but I do guest spots on different TV shows and, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, one thing that's kept going a little bit has been uh, the voiceover work. So I just finished dubbing something for uh, Netflix. So mm. that kept me that kept me busy, uh, and you know, I you know, so that stuff has sort of been it's been really traumatic for actors, not more than anybody else, but just from our point of view, you know, everything closed down for us too. So right. it was a real shock. You know, I was going off to teach. I was going off to Europe. Actually, I was going to Warsaw, like the day we shut down in California and or the day before we shut down in California. I was actually able because we couldn't go to Europe. The uh, I was able to go to an audition. And then the next day after I went to the audition, everything shut down. And of course, things being what they were, it looks, I was in the early running to actually book the job. Wow. So, so it was like everything, it was like, I was supposed to go on this sort of exotic teaching gig, done. I was supposed to get up what looked to be the possibility of a pretty cool job. I don't think I can really say what it was because um, nothing's in stone, but, uh, but it would have been a really cool gig and gone. <laughs> so it was like, huh? <laughs> but, uh, what? So, you know, for everybody, you know, uh, you know, I can really, re- you know, you relate to people with real jobs who suddenly can't do anything. You know, being an actor is a lot like being a freelancer. So when you get your gigs, they're, you know, they're few and far between. But when you get them, it's super exciting. And then just to be shut down like that was pretty tough. But me and my friends immediately started reaching out and doing Skype calls and Zoom calls, and we have standing calls. So it's been it's made it easier, um, but it's you know it's tough. I'm sort of I can't play video games anymore. It, you know, I, it's like it worked for like there were two weeks there where I was just in Skyrim having the best time. And it just, at the end of it, sort of reminded me of all the things that I'm not doing in real life. So that was like, oh, dang. That that became sort of depressing. So, but, you know, but mostly 
that's a long answer to a short question. Mostly doing okay. How about you? You know, as good as anybody could really do during this. Unfortunately for myself, I'd say, um, you know, I can't really say how everyone else did, but um, on my end of the spectrum, I'm uh, I'm currently in Jersey, so where I'm at in particular is about ten. Oh, for for a few minutes there, it was really ugly. Yeah, I'm actually about ten to fifteen minutes away from Times Square, and which is the city, which is probably where it was hit the worst, I'd say, in terms of uh, you know overall uh, cases and tolls. But um, you know, we're actually. Bro, uh, man, I'm I'm a Long Island boy. So. Yeah. And so, you know, all my people are there and it's, it's rough. It's really tough. Yeah. Yeah. We're actually though, um, it's looking a little up. Apparently us in, uh, New York are, um, one of the three states, uh, two of the three states on, uh, track to, um, actually control the thing. So, um, you know, just got to do what, uh, the guidelines tell me to do. And, uh, hopefully, uh, sooner rather than later, we'll all get back to, uh, you know, at least a new normal. Yes, exactly. Wear your mask. Wear your mask. But yeah, it was interesting to uh, see you bring up the whole Netflix thing. That's kind of been a staple of uh, what people have pretty much been, you know, doing to keep uh, busy or entertained during this. So, um, you know, that's definitely cool. And, uh, you know, I think uh, what we're, we're most of us are uh, interested to hear us talk about would be the whole uh, Drake and Josh. I'll get into your other uh, roles later, but um, this is definitely a little, uh, you know, cool that we're doing this right now, considering uh, Drake and Josh growing up was uh, always a staple of, uh, you know, my uh, early childhood, you know what I mean? Like, growing up watching that, and that's, uh, in a way, has kind of been like the, uh, you know, the kingpin for Nickelodeon, and uh, kind of, uh, you know, one of the more well uh you know, known shows, it's kind of resonated with uh, the audience. So, um, you know, we'll get into that. But I, before we do, I want to kind of ask you about, um, you know, your early years and um, kind of how acting uh, came about for you and what kind of, um, you know, piqued your uh, interest in doing it. Well, for me, it was, I was a fa- I'm a fan first. I love, as a little kid, I just love to be told stories. That was my thing. I loved when, you know, my parents read to me. Uh, you know, there were even I went on trips, school trips where, uh, you know, I would coax friends into reading to me on the bus. I, I mean, I just love to be told stories. And so I had a, and I had a really overactive imagination. So it was a real for me, it was a real natural progression. You know, I, I you know, when I was little, once I figured out I couldn't be a fire truck or a spaceship, it was like, oh, maybe I can do those things if I'm an actor. And my parents started bringing me to theater when I was little. And, you know, when I would come home from school, I would watch movies on TV. I just was mesmerized by the whole thing. And I, you know, and I got into it in school. And there are a whole bunch of funny stories about that, but, and weird stories, because I was not a very, I wasn't a good student, because I had this overactive imagination. So because I wasn't a good student when I was littler, they wouldn't let me do theater, which is really stupid because it would have been a really great way for me to learn how to focus and, you know, and pay attention and use reading to do something that I wanted, you know, organically I wanted to do. So they were really stupid about that. But eventually they couldn't keep me out. And so I just started doing it as a kid and in school. It's really where I, I found my place. And I just, you know, I wouldn't stop. And mm. one thing led to another. I went to NYU and studied at NYU and did shows there and kept on going. And then after school was done, did shows with friends in Manhattan. Um, worked with a company called the Tiny Mythic Theater Company. So did a lot of like weirdo, crazy downtown New York theater, deconstructionist stuff and all that. And just kept on progressing and and doing stuff till eventually, um, you know, I did a couple of regional theater things and some off Broadway. And then uh, my dad called me up one day and was like, all right, it's time for you to get the hell out of here. I was like, what? He was like, go to L.A. That's you want to be an actor? Go to L.A. Um, so my father kicked me out of New York and, um, and that's when, you know, I came out here and of course the first thing I did was, uh, start a theater company (laughs) and, um, 
started a theater company. Actually, a friend of mine started it and invited me in. Uh, but that's actually how we became friends and then started doing that, you know, started doing little bits of television here and there and the, and theater and, and then Drake and Josh happened and, you know, changed my life, which was really awesome. And, mm-hmm. but still it's, you know, going on auditions, getting auditions and, uh, you know, and working with friends when I can and all that kind of stuff. So that's, that's really the sh- sort of the short version. Yeah, I'd say that, um, you know, theater and, uh, you know, even school plays are kind of like, you know, albeit small or kind of like um, things that uh, could potentially like maybe spark, um, you know, maybe young people's interest in terms of, you know, wanting to get into acting and uh, things of that nature. The great thing about theater when you're a young person is, and I think a lot of people don't realize this, it's a team sport. Yeah. So the same things that that kids who are more inclined to that to sports, the same lessons that are learned there are the same lessons you learn from working in the theater. Mm. You know, there, yeah. there there are a lot of real basics. You know, you have to work together. You have to be responsible. You, if, you know, if you're if you're on a football team or a, or a, any team, you got to know the playbook. Yeah. And the same thing. The playbook in theater is your script. You got to know the script. You got to know how it fits together. The director is really a coach, you know, teaching you the best ways forward. You know, you've got, you can't go on stage before it's your time to go on stage. You know, so if you're playing offense, you don't go on the field when defense is out there. You know, it, it's, you know, it's, there's, it's so much the same thing. And it's always crazy to me that it's not thought of that way. Yeah. That, that kids don't get that um, um, at first. I mean, but, but it, you know, all because you do theater in school doesn't mean that you have to be a professional actor. Just like if, you, if you're playing field hockey or, or basketball, it doesn't mean you have to become a professional athlete. But those lessons are, you know, so important, um, you know, uh, and it really, it, it really is magical. The idea of becoming a professional is a bit more daunting of a task. It's a hard. It, that's a really hard path, um, and it, all because you didn't do theater in high school or junior high doesn't mean that you can't become a professional actor too. You know, yeah. so if somebody's listening to this and they're like, "Oh God, I want to be an actor, but I didn't do high school," you know, theater. I guess I'm out of luck but no no you know you can you can learn that skill anytime Mm -hmm. um yeah (laughs) good is that good i don't know am i doing good (laughs) it's early it's saturday morning i'm just i just had my second cup of coffee (laughs) i'm like "Ah." yeah but now i kind of want to you know shift into uh, the drake and josh thing could you maybe talk to me about uh your casting story and uh, process maybe of how uh, that came about? Sure. It's a, you know, it's a fun story. I've told it a lot. Um, You know, I was just like every other actor who comes to LA, you know, you have to get your Joe job. You got to get a quote unquote survival job. And I was lucky enough to be working in a fancy restaurant. um, And I was kind of fed up with my, with, you know, with everything. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, so I was kind of, I was an, I was funny. I was just on the phone with a, I was, I was just doing a group call with uh, we meet up every, uh, every Thursday, some folks from that part of my life. We, you know, um, still get together on Thursdays and chat. And before the COVID we, uh, we would meet for lunch once a month, you know, so I'm still really tight with a bunch of these folks, but I was working in this restaurant and um <laughs> And I was pissed off. I was not a happy waiter. My my whole like um, sort of point of view was, you know, you uh, you give them the steak and then you take the twenty dollars. It was just it was all transactional for me. So I was not very big on the idea of having regulars. And this was a fancy per. This was an it was an expensive restaurant, so fancy people came in. And I ended up getting these two regulars that were really sweet. It was a husband and wife. And um, they, uh, they just took a shine to me and I took a shine to them. 
it was very rare that I would like have a regular. I, I didn't like that. So, um, so I took a shine to them. And at the time, I kind of looked more like this. I didn't really look like Walter. I had a big fuzzy beard. My hair, well, my hair's really long right now. It's in a ponytail now. That's my COVID thing. I'm not getting a haircut till this damn thing is over. Everybody else I know shaved their head. I'm like, Screw it. I'm going the opposite. Um, so, <laughs> so my hair is like, check that. Out. It's like really. <laughs> wow. Uh, but um, but anyway, so uh, um, and also I had injured myself, so I had a limp. So I was kind of the shaggy, sad, angry waiter that these two people <laughs> were uh, sort of took a, a shine to. They liked me. It was really nice. And they they were coming in for about seven months, seven months. I didn't know who he was, who the guy was. I didn't know, the, but they were really, really nice. I had heard that he was some kind of producer. Whatever. Cut to about a year later, I get a call from my agent, go in for this Nickelodeon show. I go in, I audition, I leave. That's it. Then about a month later, my, uh, my manager, I mean, calls me and is like, they want to see you, producer session for for this Nickelodeon show. I'm like, really? That was like, what? And they're like, yeah, yeah, they want to see you. So I prepared. And at this time, my hair is sh cut short, no beard, and I've gotten over my injury. So I'm walking like a normal human being. You know, I've got a good gait. And uh, I go to this audition in Burbank at the Nickelodeon place in Burbank. And I'm sitting there with... You know, it's me and like 12 other guys, all who were TV dads. I'd seen them on commercials, on TV shows. They were all straight up TV dads. I was like, what the hell am I doing here? What the hell am I doing here? This just seems, uh, little did I know from my point of view, I was completely different, but clearly I was like right in the pocket. So <laughs> I walk in and I see my regular, the guy sitting right there. And I'm like, Dan, what the hell are you doing here? And he looks at me and he goes, Jonathan? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, what are you doing here? And I was like, well, you called me. And he was like, well, this is my show. And I was like, but it's me. Did you know? And he was like, no, I had no idea. You don't look like you. <laughs> so he didn't even know it was me. So we get in, do the audition. We have a fun time, laugh, have a great time. I leave. And then I guess it's about a week or two later, I'm in a meeting at my restaurant to be, to, to learn how to teach waiters to be better waiters. And I'm sitting next to, next to my general manager and like all the people from all over the state of California are there, this, it's a, a regional meeting. And my phone goes off, it's my manager. I'm like, yeah, hello, what? Quick, I'm in a meeting. And she goes, do you want to be on TV? And I was like, ah, that's a stupid question. Come on, I'm in a meeting. What do you want? And she was like, no, 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 no. That Nickelodeon show, you got it. Do you want to be on TV? And I was like, hell yeah, I want to be on TV. Um, and so I, I, was, I, I turned to my general manager and I looked at him and I said, I quit. And he was like, what? And I was like, I just booked a TV show. I got to go. And he was a good friend. He was a really nice guy. And he, he, uh, he is a really nice guy. And he was like, yeah, get out of here. Go, go. Because <laughs> he was, you know, he was rooting for me. So I went and it turned out that Dan and Lisa, his wife, Dan Schneider, the, the producer, the executive producer, the creator of the show, they, he and his wife always liked me. And they were like, gosh, we should do something for that guy. And they did. But they didn't know that they were doing it for me, because when Dan took the audition tapes home, he showed them to his wife and he said, who should I pick? And she said, that guy pointing to me. And he was like, that's who I think. You know who that is? And she was like, I don't know, some actor. What are you talking about? And he was like, that's Jonathan. That's our waiter. And she was like, wait, the guy that we wanted to do something for? And she was like, yeah. So it turned out it was nepotism without being nepotism. You know, they wanted to help me, but they didn't know it was me that they were helping when they helped me. Wow. So it's a, it was a really lovely story. And they're, they are, they've been so generous and kind to me through the years. It was a really, it was really nice. 
You know, so it was like all the cliches that an actor, you know, wishes for. I got to, I got to quit my job. <laughs> I, I got to turn to my general manager and just go, I quit and leave. But what was funny, of course, is that I didn't really quit because for the first two seasons, I think, I would, at, when we were not working, I'd actually go back to the restaurant and work. Wow. Um, and, and, and it was fun. It got weird after a while though. Um, yeah. um, I could never really go back to working in a restaurant because it just got, it, it's too bizarre when you're like trying to take somebody's order and they're like, you're the dad from Drake and Josh. <laughs> like, yeah, you want that medium or medium rare, but <laughs> it just got to get in the way. Uh, but that, that was a, it was a really fun, that was a fun thing to happen. It was really cool. It took wow. too long though. <laughs> Cause it was like months. Yeah. That, that has got to be one of the gnarliest casting stories I've, uh, you know, heard. And, uh, yeah. honestly, you know, I'm not just going to say it's to say it, but honestly, that sounds like a scene out of a movie. Yeah. To be quite honest. Like if they were going to make a Jonathan Goldstein, uh, movie, like, you know, there's, uh, you know, you got your script right there. Wow. You know what the funny thing about that is if they made a Jonathan Goldstein movie, they probably wouldn't cast me, which is really annoying. I'm too yeah. old. I'm too old to play me. Um, but uh, but yeah, that was a funny joke. Like when the show was ending, I kept on going up to Dan and going, the Johnny Goldstein variety hour. What do you think? <laughs> he was like, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> So now I got to ask you, though, what was, uh, you know, your initial, um, you know, thoughts and expectations coming into Drake and Josh? Thoughts and expectations. Gosh. Um, uh, well, I was super excited and, you know, it was really interesting. Josh and Drake both at that time were so, um, you know, that, you know, for they were little kids. They were like fifth. They just turned 15, I think. And, but they were so experienced. They really knew how to work on a TV show. So a lot of my, you know, I would follow their lead a lot. And Dan was really helpful in terms, you know, there were, I had done some camera work before that and had actually worked on a set as a dialogue coach on a show called Half and Half um, with, that starred Essence Atkins and and a good friend of mine, Rachel True. Um, and Rachel had asked me to, if I would be her di the dialogue coach on the set, she got me the job. And being there on set was really helpful in terms of what to expect when I actually got a job like that. All, I had never really worked on a sitcom before. The only, most of the camera work that I'd done were on, was, were on procedurals and you know, like cop shows or you know, stuff like that. So I never really worked on a, on that, even though it's very theater-like, you're still working with camera, so it was a little different. But I kind of knew what to expect. The interesting thing was, you know, taking the lead from the boys and and um, and uh, and they were really helpful. Like uh, the, one of my first uh, big scenes, I kind of tightened up, and it was with Josh, and I kind of I love telling the story. I kind of tightened up, and I was having trouble with my lines because I was so nervous and Josh and this time you know this was when we first started so he was like really young and his voice was really high and squeaky right and so we're sitting on in the living room set uh, on the sofa and he's sitting in the chair and I'm like oh they just called cut and I was like oh shit, you know, damn it why can't I get it together and Josh just looked over he put his hand on my knee and he was like it's okay it happens to everyone don't worry about it and I was like oh Cool, thanks, man. Then I was like, blah, blah, blah. wait, did a 14-year-old just calm me down? It was very, like, very role reversed kind of thing. Um, but he, but they were pros, man. So it was really great to watch them work. And it, 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 and the whole, the crew was just great bunch of people. It was a real family feeling, you know. Any actor knows that when you get into a play or anything that works for a while, you get this real, you know, unless there's some, you know, unless there's problems, um, you really get into a groove and it's really wonderful. I, I really do miss that feeling 
of, you know, being surrounded. Everybody's there doing the same thing. And it's a real wonderful team, you know. Uh, but that, so my expectations were, this is going to be fun, and I'll be damned if it wasn't. It was, uh, it was tons of fun. We had a great time. We had a great time. And I think everybody had a great time watching it. Yeah. You know? Yay. That's that kind of led to, uh, you know, my next, uh, you know, kind of point was some of your more, like, iconic moments and lines. Something uh, that I really found entertaining was the uh, whole um, episode and moment when you uh, had the cumin waffle. Yes. Oh, my God. That one always cracked me up. And then it was, um, you know, the touche, the touche line. Is that a touche? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was, uh, you know, your whole uh, maybe thought process with, uh, you know, those kind of moments? and uh... Well, you know, the writers on, on Drake and Josh, a ton of them have gone on to do, like, extraordinary things in Nickelodeon and other places. They're, they're, they were wonderful. And Dan, they just had this great, uh, th their imaginations were great. And the first day, I think it was the first day on set, I think this is kind of what set how they treated Walter and what they were going to do with Walter. Because a uh, couple of the writers came up to me and they're like, so like when you were a kid, what did you like watching? Who were your, who, who did you like? What was your thing? And I didn't realize at the time that they were totally probing me. They wanted to like find, you know, writers are smart folk, right? So they're looking, they want it. It's not, it's not they're looking for the easiest way, but they want to write for who they've got, right? Because that makes the whole thing work. So I was like, oh gosh, you know, and I'm kind of an avuncular guy anyway. I'm very, uh, you know, I'm, I'm horrible on the inside, but, but if you just meet me, I, I'm, I come off pretty nice, I think. But I was like, uh, I was like, uh, well, the one of the characters that I really loved was Barney Fife on the on the uh, uh, Andy Griffith show. Are you familiar with that? So yeah. Barney. So the Andy Griffith show was a really seminal show. Started in the '60s, um, and Opie was his son. That's uh, what's his name, Ron Howard. You know the famous director. Yeah. yeah. Started as a kid actor. And he was the young son on this show. And Barney, it was about Andy Griffith was the sheriff of Mayberry, this small town, USA. And Barney Fife was his goofy but lovable um, sidekick. He was the deputy. And he was, wow. and he was a lovable moron. And so I said, I really loved him. He just gave me a tickle. So I, I think that had something to do with the direction that they set Walter in as being sort of the goofy, but, you know, not quite the brightest bulb on the tree, but, but nice and, but nice guy, you know, who's going to fricking pay for a fricking helicopter that your children steal. Right. Um, but, uh, but, um, but, uh, so I think me telling them that was a little bit of a push in the direction of making Walter that way. At least I like to think so. Um, but, uh, I loved playing him I, because of that. And it was really great. It started really getting good with the relationship between Walter and Megan, the way she treated Walter. I just, the moments that we had together, cause I really adored Miranda. I, you know, still do. She's, but she's a, she's an adult now. So she's gotta be awful because there's nothing better than, you know, a wonderful kid. And she was just wonderful. We, I, I don't mean that. I mean, she's great. <laughs> I don't mean she's awful, but you know, you know what I mean? Now she's an adult. Yeah. It's different. She was, she was so much fun on set and, and uh, because we both had so much downtime, you know, um, in between things. And usually it, if I was there, the mom wasn't, Nancy wasn't. And if Nancy was there, I wasn't. They sort of split the time between the two parents. So we worked together on occasion, which was always super fun. Nancy and I had a great time together. And, um, but, but that relationship with Megan and Walter, that she sort of was the boss. And Walter was always kind of like, why are you calling me Walter? I, I just love that. And that was actually one of the things that I regretted the most about the show ending. Because I was... Like, as an actor, I started really getting interested in 
being the, you know, to her straight, being the Bud Abbott to her Lou Costello, sort of, that, mm. that she was kind of the, the smart one and he was kind of the dumb one. I, I was starting to really enjoy that. And then we were finished. What? <laughs> so that was too bad. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Did I answer any question that you asked me? I don't remember. Hey, I'll, I'll take it. I like the story. So. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I'm gonna ask you though. Um, what uh, if you had to say of yours was uh, some of your favorite episodes? My my favorite episode was the storm. Oh yeah. Love that episode. I, I love that episode because everybody was on it. Yeah. Everybody was there. So a personal favorite. It was a personal favorite because we were all there and we were all kind of sharing and joking around and, and, and having a good time. And that's that for me, you know, it's really interesting. You you don't really get to know this really until you experience it. The idea of like, you know, folks, you know, get to know you when you're an actor, if they see you on a show and they think that they know you and that's really great. I remember so little of the actual Drake and Josh stuff. Like the scenes that you all are, uh, that people are so attached to are the tiniest part of what my personal experience is. My experience is like hanging out with the guys and the gals and, you know, throwing food at each other backstage and, you know, stupid little arguments and laughing about it and going out, you know, going down the street to Amoeba Records and, um, you know, going out to lunches, going to see movies. That's my recollection, right? So it's like hanging out, you know, hanging out with the crew. You know, we were all music fans. One of the, uh, Vin was, Vinny was uh, one of the stage guys, Was had a drum set set up in the back. You know, things like that. I remember, like, that's the crap I remember. Yeah. You know, so it's a it's a totally that's a totally different experience. Um, um, so, yeah. So, I, I, I mean, wait, what was the question? Again, I've lost the, too much. Caffeine. Uh, uh, too much caffeine, uh, man. I'm revving. I'm revving. I'm going too fast. <laughs> I was asking you your favorite episodes. Yeah. So so that was like everybody was around. We were all joking around and we'd all met each other and knew each other. But that was a great time because we were all goofing around. Everybody was having fun. It was great to see everybody. And it is a really funny episode. It is, yeah. yeah. So it's a really funny episode. And like, I remember like, they, you know, when they stole my shirt, I'm in, and, and for me, that thing when it starts to rain, we did that at night. Nobody was around, but Miranda and her mom were coming back from dinner down the street. So they watched it. So they were the only people there, aside from the, the director and the crew, from the cast. So that's like a little memory. I just remember the two of them standing there just giggling their faces off as I'm getting squirted with water. And they were really cool because so much was happening and I couldn't remember the lines, so they drew up cue cards for me. Because <laughs> I just couldn't get it out. It was so bizarre. Um, but it was really, uh, But it was really great. Like, those are... It's the camaraderie stuff that I remember. And that, not that there wasn't on other episodes, because we all have, we did really have way too much fun. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's like, those are the moments that I remember that I cherish the most. Um, all right. Yeah, but I'm totally proud of the whole series. I mean, we really did, I think, strike a chord. You know, I think there was really something, it was such a fusion of so much, and it was such a send-up of the genre of of the sitcom. Mm. And and Dan wasn't afraid of stealing stuff, not to not as not to steal, but as an homage mm. to what we were doing. I mean, it was the Odd Couple meets the Brady Bunch. You know, it was you know these there was there was so much in it. You know, then he like. Yeah, so it was, it was, I'm so proud of it. Yeah, that, that was kind of leading into my next point, actually. I was going to ask you, like, what, what are your feelings on um, maybe the lasting impact that Drake and Josh has and what kind of, um, maybe what uniqueness about it kind of separated it from, um, you know, 
maybe the rest of uh, the Nickelodeon shows and what kind of made it stand out. And um, having not not being a real connoisseur of children's television anymore, you know, I like I I did direct a couple of episodes of iCarly, which kind of had the same spirit, um, but I'm not I'm not really an expert on on that stuff. Um, but I, <coughs> but I think what was lasting about it is that thing that I just said that it that Dan did it as sort of a send up and as an homage on the genre itself. And the, and, and the fact that, I mean, Drake and Josh are so wildly talented. I mean, they're, you can't, you know, you might like one more than the other or not, you know, but you can't deny that the, the two of them together were freaking hysterical, you know, and they really did work well together really well. Um, and, uh, you know, so there were just, I think the elements, uh, and it was the right place, right time. Because there was not, at that point, that didn't exist in the landscape of entertainment. As a matter of fact, I don't even think Nickelodeon understood what it was. And then when it became a big hit, they were like, wait, what? Because, it, you know, that wasn't supposed to work anymore. I mean, it's a really, that would have been, a straight up like prime time TV show when I was a kid, you know? Um, so it was kind of this weird throwback and everybody thought nobody likes that, but isn't it funny? People really like well-told stories with funny people in it. <laughs> Duh. Duh. <laughs> and so, I mean, you know, so it, I, I, yeah, I mean, I think that that's the, the impact is, you know, when you're in this business, you never know. There's, you never know if it's going to work or not. And sometimes, you know, you look at the script and you go, Ugh. or you look at the actor and you go, Ugh. but then you put it all together and, and magic happens, you know? And I think, I think kind of magic happened on that set mm -hmm. that there was like, Oh God, it all works. And it worked really well. And it was, and it's a testament not just to one individual. It, it really was like everybody from, you know, from everybody from the directors to the, uh, to the backstage crew, to the carpenters, everybody. And when I directed, I saw it too, because they use mostly the same folk. There was just this wonderful, like, we're going to make it happen. Not that it doesn't happen anywhere else, but there was just a great camaraderie. And even now I know people who are still working on like the Henry danger force thing, you know, that, that, uh, that's on Nickelodeon that were, that are, I don't want to say leftovers, but they're from that original Drake and Josh crew that had been around. they have been working at Nickelodeon even before that, but their attention to detail and all that is really, you know, the world's come alive and it's really wonderful. It's amazing, you know, and I experienced it when I was directing, too. It was like, yeah, build this thing. And they built it, and it was awesome. You know, it's like, it's amazing. Um, so, yeah, I think magic happened there, and, you know, you can't, it's hard to catch lightning in a bottle, but when it's there, it's there. And people's responses, I mean, the fact that people still have affection for it, even, like, at your age and stuff like that, that's... That's really cool. It's really special, yeah. Do you feel as though um, you guys got a proper ending, though? Or do you feel like there was still meat left on the bone with the show? I think that in some ways the show ran its course because Drake and Josh, I think, were sort of done at that time. Um, it would have been weird to, like, send them off to college. I think at that point... And Miranda was coming into her own clearly, and they gave her a show. Um, would I have liked to have gone on? Hell yeah. It was a great gig. You know? Um, and, you know, there's all this talk about, like, reboots and stuff like that. You know, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, it'd be great, but, I, I, you know, that's, that's way beyond my pay grade. I don't make those decisions. I mean, Drake and I, I don't know if you know about this, Drake and I started doing, like, uh, this goofy thing called Where's Walter, which wow. was, which was, we were 
he called me up one day and he was like, Johnny, let's have lunch. I, had, I just got this new camera. And so we were talking at lunch. He was like, he showed me the camera and he was like, let's shoot something. So we were trying to figure out what to shoot. And he was like, let's shoot that Where's Walter thing. Because I had started this hashtag for my teaching. I travel around the world. So I started this thing called Where's Walter. And, um, and uh, so he was like, yeah, let's do something with that. So I, I had been kicking the idea around with a friend of mine. Uh, and it was like, what if like Walter just like shows up and he's a hobo? Can't figure it out. So it was like, what we 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 came up with this whole and we shot a bunch of of these silly episodes and put them up on his YouTube channel. So we sort of were and and people were and when I say people, I'm talking about like other cast members were super excited, like right away. Like um, Yvette Nicole Brown got involved and she did an episode. And like people came on board, Nancy did an you know, I don't think we ever asked Miranda. I mean, it wasn't one of those things. It wasn't like a, you know, it just sort of was like me and him goofing around because we live, we live near each other. So it's kind of like we have easy access to each, <laughs> to each other. <laughs> so, uh, so we would just goof around and because, you know, and I think it was Yvette who said, are we getting the band back together? It was one of those like, oh my God, everybody was so excited to do something. Um, so we did a bunch of that. I don't even think it's online anymore, but you know, it would be cool, but I don't know. You know, I mean, I, I think the fans would love it. I, I, oh, 100%. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know, you know, talk to Josh, talk to Drake. Might have to. <laughs> yeah, get it together, people. Get out there, start marching. <laughs> Um, it would be fun. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you uh, previously alluded to um, you know, directing uh, what a couple episodes of iCarly. Correct me if I'm wrong. What are your maybe thoughts on uh, that show and maybe Victorious, Big Time Rush, other shows that followed um, Drake and Josh? What do you mean, my thoughts? What, is, what do you mean, like how? I mean, were they as good as Drake and Josh? Is that what you're trying to get me to say? Not like a comparison, so to speak, but if maybe you uh, you know, particularly. I them. Well, first of all, it's not really my demographic. Like nobody, uh, they're not trying to please an old fart like me. You yeah. Know? You know, so I, I thought, I mean, they were really, really kind to me and allowing me to, to, to um, what they call uh, trails, uh, 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 shadow somebody, which is when somebody wants to direct, they, you get to go on the set and shadow the director. And so you can get a sense of it. And they were really patient with me. Dan was wonderful. And the whole the whole production staff was great, and the directors that worked on the shows were really generous, and allowed me to go in. So when I was doing that, I was more st trying to figure out like how do I just direct television? I directed theater before, and I've had my hits and misses with that. Um, and I really enjoy I enjoyed the process. It was really difficult um, in some regards. Uh, but once I sort of got a handle on it, I realized I don't know if this is the genre I want to concentrate on, which I think was a big mistake, frankly. Um, so I didn't really push it. I did a couple of episodes and then I stopped, um, which was foolish, frankly. I, I should have stuck with it because I, 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 the, the directing process for a sitcom when, or when you're working with multi-camera, is really complicated because you're expected to, you know, as you're doing it, you're doing camera blocking, you're doing the actor blocking. And when you go back into the video village where, you know, where you, where you observe as the takes are happening, there's a big screen and it's called the quad and you have each camera is it's split up. So you see all the camera shots on one quad. So learning how to look at that is like, you get crazy. When the truth is, it's really easy. You just look at one at a time, right? But I was I was really anxious, but I did learn a ton and it's really complicated. And it's for me, it was a great way to learn how to direct camera that made single camera, I don't wanna say easier because that's not the right word, but it was a lot more, it was easier for me to sort of get around the concept of camera placement and things like that. Um, so in terms of like what show is better, I, I, I mean I can't I, I can't I can't comment on that because 
to be truthful, I'm not a big fan of the sitcom anyway. Like that's not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more, you know, I like, I like, uh, this might, I, I like doing storytelling that's different. Although I really enjoy acting in sitcoms. Mm. Comedy acting is super fun. I hadn't done one in years, and I think about a year, two years ago, I did an episode of a show called The Middle, and it's which is more, it's a single camera, but it's a situation comedy, mm. and it was like putting on an old comfortable sweater. <laughs> I had forgotten how much I liked, uh, you know, that it was like really wonderful. Uh, but yeah, I don't. I, I don't know. They were all great. You know, the time that I spent on the Victoria's set when I was shadowing and watching those kids work and watching those directors who I already I had already known from Drake and Josh uh, do their work was really fun. I thought that was, that was a that seemed from what I saw to be a very imaginative and fun show. Um, and I Carly, I thought was really great. The kids were all awesome. So, yeah, I mean, I love I, I loved them but I don't have a stake in like the storytelling. Yeah. So I, I, I couldn't really comment on that. Yeah. I, I thought that, I, you know, the scripts that I saw were all funny and tight and great. Mm. And all the actors I already, I already had great affection for like, you know, for Miranda and for Jerry. So it was like, they, it, as far as I was concerned, they could do no wrong. I, you know, I loved working with them. Um, right. But, uh, but yeah. I think they're all great. I think, you know, Dan kind of had a, you know, a, you know, he, he had a re he had a really, he has a really good sense of, of, of television. He's a real fan and he's been around for a long time. So it was really fun watching, watching that stuff and seeing how he would, how he would shape things. Mm -hmm. I guess but that's you, the best answer I can give. Yeah. Well, we uh, just talked about your, you know, your other roles, but I kind of want to, uh, you know, shift into maybe some of, uh, you know, your other casting roles briefly and just uh, maybe ask you what, um, you know, what your, uh, you know, experiences were like there. Because obviously, you know, I've uh, done my research a little bit and I know that um, you uh, appeared in uh, Criminal Minds, NCIS, <laughs> just to name a few. What was it like maybe, uh, you know, going into those uh, type of, um, you know, shows and uh, maybe what was more of your uh, more fun roles that you uh, have done? More fun roles? Uh, well, they're all fun. You know, I'm a working actor, so it's like, what's your favorite role? The next one. You know, it's always like going and doing the next next thing is always the challenge. And uh, and now that I'm, you know, I don't. It's weird. I don't. When I was younger, I used to like want to see what I did, I don't have that desire anymore because I'm more interested in the process of making stuff. And if I watch the, the show, it's usually because I'm interested in like, I did something and I want to see if they used it in the edit and stuff like that. So, um, but fun, it's like when you go and do interesting stuff, like I did something uh, on a show called The Magicians and so I, you know, went up to Vancouver to do that, and you know, I was playing a god, so, you know, it was which was you know, like a hippie god. It was he was kind of more like um, the Big Lebowski, you know. So that was super fun, and um, you know, playing that kind of like, hey man, I'm stoned, but I'm God. Hey, uh, that that was that was sort of fun. I mean, they're all fun. Uh, you know, because you get it is it is really exciting you to meet new people and and honestly, most people that you meet know how lucky they are to be doing it. So it, it's it's very rare that I've gone on to a set where people suck. You know, right. people are people are really like thrilled, happy, excited, and into the work. So that's always. And generous, you know, so it's all that's it's, it's a really it's nice work if you can get it, you know, mm -hmm. like I did. Uh, what was super fun? I made great. Uh, uh, I did a show. I did an episode of Magnum in Hawaii where I went over there and I didn't have any scenes with this young woman. Uh, uh, 
but she was playing my daughter. And um, we got, you know, we got to hang out a little bit. So I made a friend there. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's all, it's all sort of great. I mean, I don't, I mean, the, the profounder, if that's a word, the profounder experiences generally come when you have more time. So a couple of years ago, I did a play in, in Washington, D.C. Um, called um, If I Forget, which is a, um, which is a, uh, which was really an amazing experience with an amazing cast, an amazing piece of theater. And, um, you know, that was great. Was that a good answer? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really enjoyed working on this Netflix thing too. Work uh, uh, a buddy of mine is the director, a guy named Joe Freya, who is wonderful. And uh, it, you know, he was directing. You you have to. The challenge was great because you have to match the the performance of the actor who's doing it in their native tongue. And so that's that's a huge challenge. But uh, you know, and being there watching somebody do a performance, matching their performance, starting and stopping, making sure the flaps are all together, you know, that you're matching as best you can what they're saying. Like these people, I think, were speaking in Flemish. It was a show out of Belgium. So matching all of that stuff is, really, is a challenge that's, that's super fun. So, I mean, I, I enjoyed that. I don't know. Was that, good an, was that a good answer? I don't know. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Am I being entertained? Are you yeah. entertained? Definitely. Okay. <laughs> Could you maybe tell, uh, you know, our audience uh, what you're up to nowadays, though, in a kind of a synopsis? Well, I'm doing a lot of sitting at home. Um, you know, uh, um, I'm thinking of going on a road trip to visit my niece and her uh, boyfriend up, uh, up north. Um, what else? God, well, you know, I, like I, I, I've been teaching, so that's been keeping me relatively busy uh, at home. You know, social distancing with friends. Uh, a buddy of mine and I are going to try to caravan and go to a drive-in movie theater, um, you know, and socially distance, but see the same movie at the same time. Uh, what else is going on? Jeez. Uh, I've been, you know, because the numbers started going up in California, I've really been trying to stay home and not do anything, which, you know, has its ups and downs. You know, it's kind of weird just staying home. Um, you know, I've been practicing guitar a little bit more than usual. Um, you know, a buddy of mine has a um, has a, uh, a game show that he started called You Know It on YouTube. So I've been watching that. Uh, Drake and I were actually a guest on it a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think Drake asked me, I don't know if this is official. Uh, I talked to, uh, I think I'm going to do some kind of live stream that he's doing for Mexico. Um, I think I'm going to be on that as his guest or he's going to like play a bunch of music and then we're going to sit down and chat for a while. Um, what else am I doing? I don't know. Talking to family and friends you know, looking for trouble. Because usually I'm trying to stay out of trouble and right. now I'm looking for it, but there's none around. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's, you know, that's about it. Right. Uh, well, uh, you know, this was a ton of fun. And uh, I'm glad I was able to, uh, you know, make this happen with you. And it was a nice trip down memory lane for the both of us, really. And I hope that you've uh, had as much fun as I had. And uh, thanks for coming up. My pleasure. Had a great time. And please um, help me out. Follow me on Instagram if you want to. It's uh, Jonathan L. Goldstein on the old Instagram. And uh, if you want me to wish any of your family and friends a happy birthday or anything like that, I'm on that cameo thing. I just started doing that, too. And that's that's cool also, because I love to it's great to like be able to thank fans like one on one. That's that's I really I really enjoy that. So a nice thing. All right. Well, thank you, and uh, you know, take care and stay safe. And I'll uh, link this to you when it's up. Okay. Cool. Great. Thanks All a right. lot. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.